Hey guys, it's RC here. I am back with episode one, Club Five. Yes, that's right. We have switched clubs. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for daily football manager content, and let me know what you think of the move in the comments below. Uh, so, what has happened, RC? What have you done? So last episode, we had the run-in with the board. You guys know back when I, you know, and we'll talk about it again here. When we took the job in Spain with Levante, I really wanted to come to France. And I took the job at Levante because it was a good job. It interested me. Viewership declined by 50% on, that, on this series. Somebody said, well, it's that time of year. And I said, yes, but you don't understand. A, I don't have a big channel. I've got 10 or 11 pretty dedicated subscribers that watch all my videos, and I'm still getting the double-digit views on our Play the Kids Youth Challenge. So it's something about either Levante or Spain not being of interest. So it was to a point where I wanted to leave. We had three jobs come open in France. Uh, I looked at them, and we'll talk about why I took this job. Uh, so just to, suffice to say, I am now the head coach at, uh, the manager at Grenoble in France in Ligue 1, and we'll talk about them, uh, here in a minute. Kind of give you some background on why this was the team. So if you have not seen the Leeds United documentary, Take Us Home on Amazon Prime, highly recommend that you watch it. Very, very good. Even if you don't like Leeds, it's just a good series and it's good to watch and, you know, see some of the insight into a club. And it was well done. I think it was one of the most well done right up there with, say, the Tottenham one. Uh, didn't like the Man City one as much, surprisingly. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, my personal opinion. But in, in the first season, I think it was six episodes. Season two was two episodes. That was during COVID and everything else. One of Beals' friends in Argentina made the comment that for Bielsa to take a job, several things have to happen. First and foremost, he has to fall in love with the city and the people and the fans. That's the first thing. If he doesn't like the city, doesn't like what it has to offer, doesn't feel like the fans are a positive thing, uh, he will not take the job. So he's not looking for prestige clubs. He's not looking at a Real Madrid. He's not, you know, Tottenham has come out and said, oh, he wants the Tottenham job after this year. I'd put money, he's not going to take the Tottenham job. Even if he doesn't stay at Leeds, he's not taking the Tottenham job. Not going to happen. Because he, he probably doesn't like the way they do business. Um, but be that what it may. And Tom, that's not a slight on you. Um, Tom T is one of my longtime subscribers. Uh, haven't heard from him in a while. Hope you're okay. Uh, but I know he's been keeping busy. Uh, but uh, I do miss hearing from you, buddy. Um, but he, you know, he has to like love, fall in love with the city, the fans, the people, and then he has to have a challenge. The club has to be a challenge that he's excited to undertake. There has to be something he can build and develop. That's what he enjoys. This job has that. We'll talk about why. So we asked the Levante Club to, you know, they wanted us to have the best youth set up in Europe. We had a four-star. They had just upgraded it twice, but it had already gone back to a four-star with the ending of the season. I asked for it to be improved again. They told me no. I went and talked to them, and I said, this is something we need to do. And they rejected me again. And Bielsa has a history. He will do this. If you don't support his vision for the club, he's done. A couple of other things. We had already we had made the Champions League. I had done everything. You know, we had gotten out of the group stage in a thriller. Need to go watch that if you haven't seen it. We lost the first leg against Man City last episode, four to one at home. So I knew we weren't gonna beat them by three or more goals 
and we weren't going to have, you know, four away goals against them at the Etihad. Just wasn't going to happen. So that coupled with wanting a job in France, seeing that you guys, based on your actions, don't really want to see Spain, which means I won't come to Spain ever again uh, for football manager uh, unless I find a change in that. But then finding Grenoble and thinking back, and I, I, I've tried, I've told you guys, I try to do this save in the mindset of what Bielsa might do. I think Bielsa would quit on a team midseason if they don't support him. Hell, he quit after three weeks when he wasn't supported at his last job prior to Leeds or two jobs prior. And then he has to fall in love with the city. Dude, I got a picture I need to show you. I immediately fell in love with the city. Don't know anything about it. Just fell in love. I actually took a screenshot, texted it to my wife and said, do you want to move? And I got a big bug-eyed emoji from her, which was her answer of, God, I wish I could, but that would not be the mature, responsible adult thing to do. (laughs) So uh, anyway, uh, that is what set me on this path. I had just signed a five-year contract in January. That, that's what brought me to Grenoble. So let's jump into a few things. I've signed a two-year deal, $63,000 a month. Comes out to about 680-ish thousand euros a year. And if we look at my earnings, I've made $27 million. Probably haven't spent $27 million. So I've got a little bit of cash socked aside. So we've got to find a house to live in. I want to show you the city. Got to show you this picture because I was like flabbergasted in a good way. So let's jump into that. All right. So we come from Spain. Levante was down on the coastal region down in here. It was inland, but down in this area. So we're moving up to Grenoble, which is uh, this mountain range is the Alps comes from Liechtenstein, Austria, through Switzerland. And then you have uh, the western edge of Italy and the eastern edge of France. And most of what I know about this region comes from the game uh, game, uh, Hearts of Iron. That's what it was. Hearts of Iron 3 and 4. So let's drive in here. We have the satellite picture on. A lot of road closures. I wonder why. So this is the Grenoble area here. You've got the Krolls area up to the northeast, the Verepe area up to the northwest. And we drive into the city and we have the river. And I looked at the name of this. It's the Aser River. And we are actually over here to the east side of town and right off the river. Look how close. Uh, So here is the stadium. So very nice. You know, looking stadium, we have the palace, sports palace down here, which is interesting, a little hotel. I can stay in here while I'm waiting for my more, uh, mortgage to close and move into my house because we're in mid-season. I've got games to manage. Uh, but anyway, let's take a look. First off, we will come into the stadium. And here we are. So it's a combination football and rugby stadium. I believe it was built in 2008, and it has about a 28,000-seat capacity. Uh, So it's a relatively new stadium. It's the stadium they still play in in the game. So our goal will be to get big enough to where they need to build us a new one by ourselves. Uh, And we need to get more fans in here. So go out and buy your Grenoble tickets. (laughs) So that's the inside of the stadium. We're going to sit here on the street. This is looking at the corner of the stadium. That is the sports palace that we looked at from the overhead view off to the left. A little green area here. And let's just kind of drive down this way a little bit. All right. So let's see what we got here. A pharmacy. They seem to have pharmacies on every corner in Europe. I think every save that we've done. That is an interesting, I'm assuming that is an apartment complex. That looks like another more modern apartment complex. Gotta say, I like the older architecture with the curve in it. I do like that better. 
so anyway, that is what's going on there. I have found a place to live. So remembering that we had $27 million, I assume I've probably got 10 to 15 million still liquid, you know, in, in cash. So this is where we're moving. Uh, it's 1.5 million euros. We're making 680,000 euros a year, thereabouts. I have no idea what AUD is. Uh, when I see the D, I want to think Deutschmarks. Let me know in the comments what AUD is if you know. We're just going to go with the Euros one and a half. I obviously have enough there. Uh, can I translate this to English? That would be awesome. So we have a house 500 meters squared. That's 2,500 square feet. So that's about the size of my current house. It's in Kroll's Rhone, which is uh, in the Kroll's region, which is just north of where we were looking at. Remember here. Let's come out of here. So we have the stadium. The Krolls region is up here to the northeast. There it is right there, up to the northeast. Uh, I did a direction. It's about 19 miles. And it says about 17 to 18 minutes uh, on non-peak times, about an hour and a half uh, during peak times. Uh, I will probably stay many nights at the stadium in my office <laughs> to avoid traffic. Uh, but I will also probably, I can take a cab. I can, there's buses. It's a straight shot down the A41. So that's good news. So let's take a look here. So that's the living room and the dining room off of it. Big open concept. Uh, I'm going to mount a TV on the wall here, about a 70 incher. And uh, yeah, we don't need a TV over there. Uh, that's worthless. You need to put it up on the wall where you can see it right dead center. Uh, quite a few chairs. So Lelujo is welcome to come visit if he would like uh, on an off day. I like the brick. It's different, but it got my attention. It's unique. I, I think even the roof is brick. So that's interesting. Uh, brick drive and everything else. We have a pool with a sunning area all the way around it. They do need to call out the lawn company. I'm going to hire somebody. I don't have time to do that. Uh, you know what? That AUD, that's Australia. That is in that is in France. Why is it an Australian real estate company? That's weird. So I guess the AUD is Australian. I don't know what they have down there. It's not dinero because that's Mexican. Um, we have... Uh, and that's not racist because I have a Mexican son-in-law to be. Another shot of the living room. That's interesting. I could see relaying this and putting like my granddaughter's handprints and footprints all in it. That would be neat. I would like that. Uh, there's the lounge chairs out back of the house. We have, it looks like we have a changing room out here. That is the other side. There we go. Oh, wait, hold on. Look at that view. Oh, that is so nice. Not the view that got me in love. There was another picture I will show you guys in a minute. All right, so we have the living area here, into the dining room, kitchen with an island. That's pretty cool. I think this would be a neat workspace. Huge, huge room. I don't know if it has a bathroom in it. But look at the natural light. I wouldn't need my ring lights anymore. I could just set up right there and just record during daylight hours. Unlike nighttime, like all these vampire YouTubers <laughs> that stay up till four in the morning. Can't do that. I might wake up before four in the morning, but I don't stay up that late. All right, there's a good shot of the bathroom. This must be the toilet down here. Stand up shower. That's a must have for an American going overseas. I have no idea what this is. So if you have any clue, let me know in the comments because that looks cool i'm thinking that's like the you know i'm viewing that's like the trap you know that's where you keep prisoners um or you have uh, like rooster fights which are illegal in the states i wouldn't like those i wouldn't use it for that uh but that looks like it's something illegal so but let me know in the comments because i have no clue what that is some trees we got some shade uh, there's another shot of the house oh just love it love it uh, looks really good. Good size. It is in France. Thank you. I thought it was. 
All right, let me show you this picture. Oh my God, oh my God. I literally, I pulled this picture up and I went, yep, that's where I wanna go work. <laughs> so here's the river. The stadium is like literally right off the river. Somewhere in, you know, maybe not this area. Look at that. Just the, oh, that is so beautiful. I can't even believe it. That looks like something straight out of the Three Musketeers, uh, you know, with the crosses in the windows. I could see that dating back to Three Musketeers and the French Revolution. Uh, good, good view of some other mountains with little snow on them. Don't like those as much. There's another shot of the river. Uh, a sair going through the city. Beautiful layout, beautiful skyline and horizon. Oh, that is so nice. And then something like this. I mean, this is just kind of cool architecture. You know, a lot of seating. This would be the kind of place, uh, you know, that, you know, Bielsa could walk in, grab a coffee and a, and a croissant. And, you know, fans want take, getting autographs, taking pictures. And he would be more than happy to do it for them as long as they were respectful. You know, they're not. We go to another part of town. So that is where we are going to go. And that is the job that we are going to take. So let's jump in. I'm going to do a lot of the off-camera stuff, but let's look at the squad right quick. So we've only got one five-star, one four-and-a-half-star potential. Our best player appears to be Gabriel Garcia. 21 years old from Uruguay, 23 caps for the national team, central mid, and he can actually mark, unlike most of the players we had at Levante, and he makes a shit ton of money, much more than anybody else. Uh, speaking of finances, uh, we're $3 million more than Levante. We're right up against, you know, we're 500000 400000 under the wage bill. We've got about 2.4 million left out of the 14 million budget. I don't know that we're going to be able to sell anybody. Let's look at transfers. This guy's joining end of season. Don't really need a defensive mid. Can he play central mid? Mm, not really. Can I cancel that? Looks to be a League Two player in the future. Uh, I wonder if this is a signing to get this because <laughs> we only have three and we need four. So he would count towards this. That might be what this is, is just a signing of a, of a player that's young enough to qualify, but he doesn't look like he's got what it takes. So not very happy with that. Taking a look at recent transfers in January, they sold 36,000. Very attacking minded. Okay, Jack Taylor goes out on loan. So he'll be coming back. He's a right back with three star potential. Murphy Mboyo, uh, two and a half star potential. He's out on loan. And Manu Sabalos, 23 year old Spaniard, can play left and right, mid and attacking wing. He looks really good. And he cost us six and a half million. Uh, we did not sell anybody in the window. Who was our big signing here? Uh, Nathaniel William, center back. Why did you get rid of him? And look at that. He only appears as a two and a half star. That's crazy. I think we need to beef up our scouting team. I have already put out, uh, let's look at the staff. I've already put out uh, job centers for coaches and scouts. I'm holding off on physios because we're already there, uh, but I'd like to get better judge player ability and potential, and we definitely need a goalkeeping coach. I'd like to improve our defense in there, and uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to be working on there. We do have a assistant coach. In Sammy Segua, he's not bad. He's not bad. Not the greatest, but not bad. Uh, he's pretty far down the list in judging player ability, fourth on the list. So we're going to try to improve that. Over on the recruitment team, I did promise to work with the general manager. However, he is really good. 
So I certainly see that as a partnership that will work. Uh, we have a chief scout. That could be better. Could be worse. Could be better. So, you know, we're going to look at that. But we have some pretty good scouts. So we've got some not so good scouts that we'll take a look at. Probably not this season. All right. Well, the episode is going to run just a tad long because I want to get one match in today. So let me do all this stuff off camera. Taking a look at the schedule, they are in a bad run of form, but they did win their last game at home in front of a whopping 4,200 people. Let me repeat that. A whopping 4,200 people. Let's see. We do have a senior affiliate. Oh, no. We're the senior affiliate for them. We're the senior affiliate for the Austrian team. So that gives us club options. That's fine. Uh, facilities. Yes, this is a 20,000 seat stadium. We're drawing 20%. It could be while well, we're $29 million in the frickin' hole. We don't have any loans out, just the debt. I don't see anything that we've got to repay. All right, let me get into this and let me, let's see, when's our next match? On the 22nd, it's frickin' today. All right, well, I'll be right back for the match and we'll see what damage we can do. Where are they at in the table? 15th, that's good. That's positive. So we are starting uh, in mid table at 9th, 35 points. We're actually only seven points out of Europe. PSG's winning the league again. And we were knocked out by Lille in the quarterfinal of the French Cup. That's what they expected. But they did fire their coach. Uh, we are in the Euro Cup and we've qualified. We qualified over Leverkusen? Wow, and Anderlecht. That's pretty good. That's pretty solid. Where do we go next from there? Is that out yet? Euro Cup second knockout round. Okay. Well, that'll probably be next episode. And that's where we're supposed to make it. So we should be at 60% when we get there. All right. Let me pause the recording, get some stuff done, uh, some housekeeping duties. Uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think of the move. I'm excited. All right. We're going to go with uh, Inevelson in goal, Fran, Godoy, Nimic, and Quinonez on the back line. I really need a right back. Uh, <laughs> Perkinen, and is that who I want here? I don't know these guys. Let's take a look at them. So Fran is a wing back. Uh, he can play that. He can play that. Uh, very, very good out there. I think he's a good player. Uh, he's on loan. And Novelson, he's Danish. He looks like a solid keeper for us. Godoy, I'm going to give him the start. Very good at heading and jumping. Only two and a half star. I need to kind of figure out here early on, can these two and a half, three star guys do the job at this level? I don't understand why with ratings that good, they don't appear that good rating wise. Uh, Nimic is 23 years old, Slovakian, uh, three and a half star potential. Uh, he cannot pass. So I've switched him to a central defender. Godoy is still ball playing. Uh, Quinonez, uh, he's, he's, Pretty solid four and a half star potential. I looked, I'd like him to maybe be a center back, but I don't have anybody at right back. If we look at the people, we don't have anybody. Nobody. I don't I don't have anybody in the youth side. Let me check second team. We just don't have anybody, guys. That is a severe oversight. <laughs> we are struggling there. So you remember a few uh a while back, we played with the three bat, three center backs. We may have to go to that if uh, if we lose Quinones. So I do have that training, uh, the three four three tiki taka. Uh, if we lose Quinones, or if we have to play a game without a right back, we've got enough center backs that we can get around it. Although I, you remember that tactic? We scored a lot of goals, but we conceded a lot of goals. So I've I've tried tweaking it a little bit. But we got to see. All right, Perkinen in uh, central mid. Yep, they're my two best guys. Box to box midfielder. Garcia would be number one there. So let's see. Perkinen, very good ball handler. 
I think he's really solid out there. Garcia, uh, he can also pass well. So we've already upgraded from Levante on center, center mids. Uh, we have Nagono on the left attacking wing. And boy, he's actually an astute crosser of the ball. That's solid. Abdullah Guzel, he's 29-year-old Turkish, and he can cross the ball as well. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to play Frank Gomes up there. Let's put him in there. And then up top, I haven't even looked at my strikers yet. He's not bad. I think he could score some goals. Six foot six. My goodness. What's his heading? First touch is 18. Oh, my God. Marty is 5'10". Okay. So there's some stuff there. All right. Let's go ahead and submit the team and see what happens. First match, Raw Tactic Forum. Not expecting a lot. Luckily, we're starting off with a... Oh, we're going with the Revenge. Um, we are starting off with a team near the bottom of the league. They're playing a 4-4-2 with a mid-diamond. Let's go with some encouragement. Uh, we are in the blue. All right, there's Nagono. Good pass out to Gomez. Through to Marty. He tries to take a shot. It's cleared out, but Fran is on it. Into the box, and the header goes over the bar. All right, well, we're seeing some positives here. Really what they need to work on in this tactic, uh, taking a look at it, is their marking. Everything else is pretty decent. So hopefully uh, they don't just uh, lose the plot. All right, Fran, I don't know why he's collapsing off of his guy. Martin comes back for it. There's a header. All right, they're controlling that midfield right now. And a shot goes in by Lamine Saar, his ninth of the season. Ah, uh, that's disappointing. We don't want to really lose in our first match here, especially when they're in poor form to begin with. All right, had to pause it. Pizza showed up at the house. All right, controlled by Gomez. Can we do anything different this time? Nope, he can lose the ball. And they break through our midfield again. Oh, look at that pass to Saar. What a save. I'm going to have to change that dude's name. Let's do that right now. His first name is Rune. That's what we're going to go with. It's going to be Rune. Headed clear for a throw-in. Or Gweinkamp. That sounds German, doesn't it? To me. All right, let's encourage him again. All right, good steal by Garcia. Oh, just can't get, the, can't get it over. He's on it again. Through ball to Marty. Marty's into the box. Slots it past Blanchard. Aziz Marty, his 16th of the season. Oh, boy. Good counter. We've equalized. Things look good. The boys are positive. Gotta like that. Come on, keep it going. So, yeah, I just, you know, anytime you change clubs mid-season like this, it, you just never know how they're going to turn, if you'll get something positive or negative. All right, knocked away. Nimic, Gomez. Up the flank. Oh, he gets past his defender. Steps over. Laid off to Garcia. All right. Tackled. He's back on it. There's the shot. And it's Nicholas Martin, his 12th of the season. And we have taken the lead. Let's go ahead and give him some praise right there. I also want to jump into the tactic here and just look at something. All right, we're already on positive. I'm going to turn off run at defense. I'm going to go mixed crosses as well. Hell, we got the guy. We got the guy that's six foot six or something. Give him some headers. He's got great jumping ability. Regroup, counter. That all looks good. I would love to go into. Oh, I'm not even going to say it because I may have jinxed myself there. I would love to get it. Yeah, I'm not even going to say it. 17 shots to 7. 
And we do. We sneak into the intermission halftime, and it's Gynkamp 1 and Grenoble 2. I'm going to have to learn all the club names and everything else. Oh, my God. Um, pump the fist. I know you're capable of better. All right, Fran. Eckernan. Nagono. Into the attack zone. He tries to cross it. It's blocked. Fran gets on it. He gets across. Oh, that should have been a handball. <laughs> I'm just thinking it should have been a handball. Garcia all over it. Uh, how about spread out? Not play like you're eight years old. Come on, guys. Do better. Nagono. Oh, poor pass. Jesus. Big ball and, oh, Rune, what did you do? Agility and command of area, reflexes. You know what? I am going to change him to a sweeper keeper on attack. Oh, yeah, let's do that. He should have come out on that ball. Instead, he went back to the line and just gave up. The entire goal needs to do better there. I'd kind of be happy with a draw in our first match. I would really like to see headers to your own teammates. That would be awesome. I know that's a bizarre concept to some people. Oh, there's a shot, and it's Martin. He's got his second of the game. 13th of the season, and we've gone back on top. 3-2 to two on the road. We really need to get a win here. A win would be huge just to get off on a good foot with the club. Tackled away. God, Godoy is back. Oh, Garcia, and we get the deflection from Martin and Aziz Marty. Now he's got a brace, and we are 4-2 in the 53rd minute. That is astounding. So a pair of braces for our strike duo. And look at the fitness levels here. Nobody's even yellow yet in the 57th minute. Oh, that's not good. And I, there was a save by Rune there. That'll set up a corner. All right. How strong are we against corners? This is really our first one we've seen. It's headed out. A double header. And Martin is on it. Oh, and he's taken down. That's got to be a card. Oh, he just did the professional foul and just got a warning. Are you kidding me? That's horrible. All right, now we've got some guys starting to trend down. All right, let's go ahead and make a couple of subs here. No yellow. Don't say it. You know what's going to happen as soon as you say it. All right, let's bring Gallus in for Godoy. Um, he was having the worst game, which, you know, isn't a horrible thing. All right, Gomez for Abdullah Guzel. And I can't take off anybody on a hat trick. You guys have told me that. How about Benitez for Nagano? That's another yellow guy off, so that's good. We'll pull all three subs. It's a few minutes early, but that is what it is. But, boy, I tell you what, if we can play into the 75th minute instead of the 60th minute without making a sub, wow, that would be crazy. Crossed in. Oh, what a tackle by that guy, Nagora Bazina or whatever that is. Nagaba Ziza. Wow, that's crazy. All right, let's praise him here. Out to the side, Quinonez. The teams looked pretty good. Uh, I think, you know, they'll, they'll come together a little defensively, and we just need to get them working a little bit better on their crosses. Was he on sides? It looks like he was. Martin, that's the hat trick. He gets one. Five to two. Grenoble, and we are going to go home some happy campers today. That was a great shot. Now, this only gets us up into eighth position, 
But look, it turned. Oh, crap. Spoke too soon. An arm injury. You don't need an arm as a winger. Just tape that shit up. Oh, God. All right. Well, we're going to go here. Can he, where else can he play? Attacking mid. None of my strikers can play number 10. Yeah, that's, that's what we're going to have to do. Confirm changes. All right, his name has changed now. And a 5-2 victory. We finish it with 10 men after the injury. Hopefully it's not too serious. We're going to go outstretched arms. Happy with the way you play. We're going to start building up that morale. That is excellent. Only four points off now. Three to four weeks. Damn it. Martin Stellar. Yes, he was. You were superb. All right, his morale is up. Checking on the progress of his loanee. Well, I'm glad I started him or played him. Uh, let's take a look at dynamics in the higher. Uh, so we have good cohesion, excellent atmosphere, and average leadership support. Well, we just started, right? We're one game in. Let's look at our hierarchy. So we have three team leaders, Guzel, Nagano, Marty. Nobody supports me yet. Nobody opposes me, so that's positive. Uh, and Benitez is injured. That's my left winger. So Nagano can start out there. And then we've got Rafael Gomez to come off the bench. Good thing for him is he can play a lot of positions. All right, well, this one ran a little long with the changes. Let me know what you think of the start. Let me know what you think of the team. Where do we need to make some improvements in the offseason? Obviously, we need a left back and some right backs. That would be a no-nonsense starting place. But I'm interested to kind of figure out why. If you guys have any inkling, why are these guys that look so good rating-wise, right? Why are they only coming up as two-and-a-half and, and three-star on our squad? Not sure. But it'll be interesting. A lot of these guys are older as well. I am going to have to look at expiring contracts. Uh, we do have quite a few guys. Uh, but you know what? 34, striker, not playing. He's gone. 33, I've replaced him. He's gone. So that saves us $600,000 right there. Almost 600, 650. These guys are going to go out on loan. I would like, can I extend the offer to the end of next season? No, no. Yeah, he's up at the end of the year. So we're outside the transfer window, so I can't extend these. So all these guys are going to leave. So that's paying out, that's paying out almost a million dollars in wages right there. I see your duck. Can you hold it for me? What did you eat that's white all over your face? Oh, ice cream. Your mama gave you ice cream? Oh, she better not ever tell me nothing again. Uh, and then everybody else is into 61. So Aziz Marty, I'd like to try to sell him, to be honest, if I could get somebody cheaper and younger. That would be good. Uh, Gomez. I just don't see anybody in here. And my net, my first four-star guy is signed into 62. And my five-star guy is into 64. So, yeah, we're going to have a busy off-season window, I think. All right, guys, well, hit the like button. Subscribe for daily football manager content. And I am so excited to be here. I hope you guys like France better than you liked Spain. And uh, I am really in love with the city of Grenoble. <laughs> I didn't look at crime statistics. Maybe I'm way off here, but just visually, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful city. All right, guys, take care. Bye.